Breaking this afternoon, the Associated Press has obtained new police body camera footage of the arrest and death of Ronald Green in 2019. The new video, which has been edited by the AP, shows Green beaten and lying handcuffed on his stomach. We want to warn our viewers, this video is disturbing. Sir, don't you turn over. All right. Don't you turn over. You lay, right. lay on your belly. Lay on your belly. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Lay on your belly. Okay, okay, yes, sir. You, do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, the Associated Press also obtained a long-secret autopsy report, which NBC News has not yet obtained, that cites Green's head injuries and the way in which he was restrained as factors in his 2019 death. NBC News has reached out to the Louisiana State Police for response. Earlier this week, they released a statement regarding a separate video release in this case, reading in part, quote, The investigation into the death of Ronald Green remains under review by federal and state authorities. The premature public release of investigative files and video evidence in this case is not authorized and was not obtained through official sources. Joining me now are NBC News correspondent Priscilla Thompson and former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan, Barbara McQuaid. She is a law professor at the University of Michigan Law School and an MSNBC legal analyst. Um, Very troubling accounts there, Priscilla. What more are we learning? Yeah, Eamon. Well, from that clip that you just played, uh, we know that Ronald Green did try to roll over or prop himself up. The AP says possibly in an attempt to breathe, uh, but that law enforcement officials told him to remain on his stomach. Uh, The Associated Press did also obtain an official copy of that autopsy report, uh, which shows, according to them, that there were high levels of cocaine and alcohol in Green's system, and also that he had a broken breastbone and a torn aorta. Unclear, though, if those uh, injuries were a result of the high-speed chase and subsequent subsequent crash or a result of the struggle that took place between him and state troopers. Uh, and I want to read the exact cause of death that the AP is quoting from that autopsy report. It says, quote, cocaine-induced agitated delirium complicated by motor vehicle collision, physical struggle, inflicted head injury, and restraint. Now, notably, uh, the AP reports that the autopsy did not specify a manner of death, so whether that was considered a homicide, accidental, or undetermined. Uh, And of course, we have, again, reached out to the Louisiana State Troopers, State Police, uh, for additional information or a response to this new video. They have not responded to our requests. Amen. Barbara, what's your reaction to this? I mean, to this latest video, to the autopsy details that we're now learning about that are actually coming out two years after the incident actually took place. Well, it reminds me, Eamon, of that press release we all saw after the Derek Chauvin conviction uh, involving George Floyd's death. Remember, the initial press release out of the Minneapolis Police Department was that, you know, unfortunately, a man had suffered a medical incident and died in custody. End of story. You know, but for these videos, we only have the word of the police officers to go by. And so I think that it is very troubling to see that there are inconsistencies in what the police represented happened and what actually happened. Prosecutors refer to that concept as consciousness of guilt. It means it is some indication that the officers themselves know they did something wrong, and it usually causes investigators to look a little deeper. So I'm glad to hear that federal and state investigators are looking into this, because I think at first blush, it strikes me as very suspicious that they told a very different story from what actually appears to have happened on this video. Barbara, I want to play for you uh, a bite, a soundbite from the video where uh, one of the officers involved appears to actually admit to rough physical treatment of Green. Watch. And I beat the ever-living fuck out of him, choked him and everything else trying to get him under control. And then all of a sudden, he just went limp. Yeah, I thought he was dead. We should note uh, that the trooper heard on that video clip there, Chris Hollingsworth, has since died, uh, you know. But, Barbara, I'm curious to get your thoughts. What does that exchange actually tell you about the broader case and how can that be used one way or the other? Well, a a police officer is only allowed to use reasonable force. And so under situations when it's necessary to protect the lives of others or to protect his own life, he can use even deadly force. Um, But those words uh, that that he just chose to use there suggest at least some indication that he may have used excessive force. You know, his statements alone will not be the whole case. But if he was not 
uh, posing a risk to someone else's life. Uh, he needed to use it solely for the purpose of subduing him. It could be part of a bigger picture of use of excessive force. You know, the juries in these cases are, are, are told to consider the totality of the circumstances. Uh, so this statement alone is not enough to say uh, that there is improper force used in this case. But it certainly is one indication that they may have used excessive force. And as we mentioned there, we know that federal authorities are looking into this. Are there any actions, Barbara, that you think could be taken under federal law? What would be in violation here? Well, there is a federal statute that makes it a violation to use a police officer's authority. It's referred to as color of law. That is, you know, his badge and the authority given to him as a police officer to violate someone's civil rights. And it is considered a violation of constitutional rights to deprive someone of their life through excessive force. It's actually a Fourth Amendment seizure that's unlawful. So my guess is that's the basis for looking at it. I think an important question in this case, as it was in the Chauvin case, will be causation. What was the actual cause of death? Was it that he would have died from this car accident anyway, or was the cause exacerbated by these blows? As you mentioned, uh, the, the autopsy report says that there were blows to the head inconsistent with a car accident.